Okay, so uh, we have discussed the various crystalline matters that we describe liquid state that is we have discussed the Fourier-Huggins model and then we also have discussed the Ising model. Now we move to the new module, in this module we will be treating liquids. So as you know the liquids uh, is not that easy to represent because in uh, the way we represent it, it is a very uh, near to the similar like crystalline matter. So, where the atoms are in the lattice points, but usually the molecules of the liquid move around randomly. So, we have to do better than that. So, this particular module is devoted to those particular models and finally, we will obtain the radial distribution function. So, now what we will do is interacting molecules in a dense fluid. Okay. So, we will in this lecture we will see what do you mean by radial distribution function. So, primarily we will be concerned with the radial distribution function only in this case and the origin of this function because this is very important because it is says that uh, what is the probability that a molecule is surrounded by another molecule within a specific distance. So, how many molecules is expected to encounter in this neighborhood? So, all that will be taken care of by this radial distribution function or sometimes it is called also called as pairwise distribution function. So, let us see the origin of this expression. So, we have been talking now about dense fluid, dense fluid means the molecules are having high densities. So, the virial equation of state if you remember they are very slow to converge. So, because we, we needed beta 2 then we will also need beta 3, beta 4 likewise. So, this in, we were able to just solve for beta 2 in the gaseous phase and beta 3, b 4 you know what is the complicated form of that expression is with multidimensional integration is very difficult to solve. So, these multidimensional integrals are very difficult to solve. So, we came out with a solution or alternative, what is that solution or alternative that is the lattice based on cell models. So, lattice models we have discussed in the previous lecture or the previous module that is your Ising model and then we also discussed the Flory Huggins model. Okay, where we talk about the neighbors of the particular sites and from the neighbors we then derive the partition function. So, obviously when we talk about lattice, we talk about cell then it means they are in crystalline. So, we are assuming the liquid to be in the crystalline structure which is not true. Liquids are never in crystalline structure, they are having random motions. So, this is part of this assumption is incorrect. So, obviously, these models are not very correct. So, as I told you, it will miss the liquid behavior. Because important point to be noted is molecules do not remain at fixed positions. Okay. So, suppose you have n number of atoms, even they are indistinguishable. Can you say, okay, this particular atom is in this position and another time it is in that position? You cannot differentiate because all the atoms are same. So, it is very difficult to make out which atom is in where in which position. Okay. So, this brings us to the origin of the reduced spatial probability density function. So, we should understand few terms then we will move ahead. So, we talk about dense fluids. So, dense fluids means okay, we know what is in the case of dense fluids if we suppose we try and attempt to solve the configurational term. So, that is we know we have already found out from the canonical partition function. This is the contribution to non-ideality z. So, z is e to the power of minus u by kt. So, you now know what u is, u is the interatomic potential for the assembly of atoms. I am not writing u is a function of r1, r2. Suppose you have n number of atoms, it is a function of the coordinates of n number of atoms r1, r2 to rn. So, I am just in short I am writing u, u and then I multiply with all the multidimensional integrals. So, you will have a dr1, dr2, like that. So, all this uh, one this uh, dash below the variable is indicating it is a vector. So, with this we can one way of solving it is okay I can ask uh, okay if I fix one of the atom let us say I fix atom number 1. Okay. So, then we ask the question that which are the atoms surrounding atom 1. But then the thing is we are fixing the atomic position of atom 1. So, then we are solving, but that is not a correct way because the atoms are moving. 
atoms are moving means the once you fix the atoms you cannot change that particular coordinate again or the point of origin again. So, you cannot take let us say one the atom goes to 1 to 2 position then you change your origin from position 1 to position 2 that is not possible. So, even if I want to write this way I want to solve this way z n v t which is a function of n v t I write in this manner I will just check out one of the variable out the remaining things remains the same. So, this is the multidimensional integral then minus u by k t except for I write here like this instead of 1 2 I write 1 2 this bar. So, I write in terms of interatomic distances. So, of atom 1 with all other atoms. So, atom 1 with 2 then atom 1 with 3 like that ok. This way I can fix the configuration and integral ok and the final one will be dr 1 n ok. Then you have do the with respect to 1. This way I can do but as I told you it is incorrect because this way ok you can do the integral of dr 1 which will be the volume because once it is the volume is the integral is above the entire uh, volume. So, dr 1 is the elemental volume you integrate over the entire surface it is equal to v. So, I can put a v as a prefactor and then multiply the remaining thing. So, dr 1 2, dr 1 3 like that, dr 1 n. So, to solve this it will not give a proper definition because now origin of the coordinate can be chosen only once. You have fixed it, integration is fixed and you have the results. Further simplification of the integral by choice of the coordinate system is not possible. So, you cannot change let us say from 1 to 2 and 3 like that. So, you cannot get the correct value of z. This is where we need the difference or a way to produce this particular uh, distribution in a more accurate manner. Let us see. So, we come to the point where we talk about the reduced spatial probability distribution function. So, well we cannot talk about a single atom, now we have to define a distribution. So, let us suppose we have a collection of n identical and this time it is let us say it is distinguishable for example, atoms or molecules in a volume V at temperature T, but mostly it is indistinguishable but this case we assume to be distinguishable ok. So, our question is obtain an expression for the probability of finding molecules in a specific location near each position ok. What are the different atoms in the sphere of influence of a particular atom? We have to find out that. Let us say we uh, have a atom 1. Let us say I want to check what is the probability if I, I have a atom 2 within the sphere of influence where the interatomic radius is r. But it is very difficult to do because this particular position whether it is atom 1 or atom 2 it is a continuous variable because there are infinite number of positions more atoms will not be fixed in position ok. They will go from here then here then here like that. So, all the resemblance of the numbers atom 1, 2, 3 is lost. So, we do it's very difficult to track them. So, it means probability since they are moving in a random manner the probability of finding a molecule at any point is essentially 0 because it is moving. So, we cannot say the in the neighborhood only that atom is there because that atom is also itself moving. So, it means if it is moving it is replaced by other atoms, but we are not concerned about the other atoms, we are only concerned about what is the probability I am having, I am having atom number 2 let us say around the sphere of influence of atom number 1. So, there are infinite number of positions, so it means it is 0, the probability is almost 0, so infinite means 1 upon infinite number of position, 1 upon infinity it is close to 0. So, probability of finding a molecule at any point is thus equal to 0. So, this brings us to the point that we have to propose instead of direct probability a probability density function. So, from probability we need a probability density function. So, now we can ask the question in a similar manner but in a different way that is what is the probability that the molecule is located in a finite but differential volume element dr. So, dr is a differential volume element about a specific location r. Probability, what is the probability? Again I will repeat a molecule is located in a finite but so if we consider a very definite volume dr that is a very small volume 
then what is the probability that a molecule is in that small volume at that particular distance which is location at r. So, it model assumption is volume element dr we have to assume it is so small that it can contain at most a single molecule. So, it means the molecule will be only one within this elemental volume. Okay. So, it can consist at the most one molecule. So, then we ask the question probability what is the probability that a molecule 1 is in a small volume element dr1. Now, we put some numbers here dr1 around the location r1. So, we know there is only one molecule present in dr1 and that is a molecule 1. So, it is nothing but dr1 by the total volume total volume is what is the total volume v that is it because this is only one volume one molecule can stay and in this v all other molecules are staying. So, probability is that particular volume have one atom of this particular molecule divided by total volume. So, this will be simply equal to dr 1 by v. So, it is a fraction of total system volume. Now, let me ask another question what is the probability that one of the n molecules is in dr 1 around its position vector. Now, we have talked about a specific atom, atom 1 because in the starting I told they are distinguishable. Now, what is the probability that any one of the molecules, any one of the n molecules is in dr1, then you have to multiply by n. So, it means in that case likelihood is, what is the likelihood that one of the molecules will be in dr1 that you have to multiply by n. So, you have n into dr1 by v this you should understand. So, any of the atom earlier this was 1 because we are concerned about only a 1 atom now because any of the molecule can be in dr1 so multiply by n or I can write down as n by v I can write out the number density rho. So, we you have to multiply rho with dr1 the elemental volume. So, this is the likelihood that any of the n molecules is within the volume element dr1. So, now there are two difference when I talk of the ranges of this let us say this is a and this is b. So, for a it means this particular a will approach 0. So, it means the probability will approach 0 when dr1 is very small okay? and it will be exactly unity when dr1 is equal to the system volume then it becomes 1. So, the range is from 0 to 1 when you talk about the absolute probability. Now, when you talk about the probability density, so initially when this very less it will be 0 and when it is absolutely very high, so it will be V, so V, V cancels out, so it will be N. So, here your ranges will be from 0 to N. So, we have changed the range from 0 to 1 to 0 to N. Okay, This is what we have to find out the probability distribution. So, now we ask another question what is the probability that molecule 1 is in a volume element dr1 around this position vector r1 simultaneously that molecule 2 is in volume element dr2 around r2 and molecule 3 is in the volume element dr3 around r3. Okay? So, now we have three different elemental volume dr1, dr2, dr3 and we are now asking what is the probability that molecule 1 is in dr1, molecule 2 in dr2 and molecule 3 in dr3. Their position vectors are given by r1, r2, r3. The issue is it is not so straightforward because the presence of one molecule in one of the elemental volume will influence the presence of the other molecule in the other elemental volume. So, the energy of interaction between the molecules in the different volume elements which would influence this probability. This particular influence we will be talking is equal to the Boltzmann factor of the interaction energy in the configuration. So, we talk about how the particular influence is quantified and this influence within the molecules are quantified using the Boltzmann factor and when it is a configuration integral you just normalize with z that is the configuration integral. So, in this case we can write down this is how it actually influences so this will be the factor minus u again this is r r is the distance 
position vectors of all the atoms. Then uh, you have dr1 like that up to dr n. Okay. So, this is the exponential factor and then the z factor. The z, z, what is this? e to the power of minus u. Then this r and this r is same by, so this is by chi kt, this is by kt and this is the same. Okay. So, this r is nothing but r1, r2, rn. Okay. So, you know this one, you can write down this as simply z and this e to the power of minus u r by kt into dr1 to drn. So, this is the way it is influencing this particular wet influences the presence of one atom in one of the volume and other atom in the other volume. Now, let us suppose we write down the expression what is the likelihood function. So, we are now hence the reduced probability function let us derive but we want a for fewer number of molecules okay because we don't want to know you know how all the atoms are located to each other or where they are we are only concerned about the distribution between let's say few number of molecules because even if in a chemical system let's say you have water and you have some other compound so you will be only interested to know let's say whether there is hydrogen bonding between two atoms let's say hydrogen or oxygen from water and the other oxygen or hydrogen from water. So, you need to see how this oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom of within the respective molecules are distributed. You do not need to need to know all the interatomic potential, you do not need to know what is the location or how does the distribution of location of all the atoms is affected by all the atoms from the other molecule. So, that is what we call it is a fewer number of molecules. So, if I want to generalize this particular expression. I like to find out what is the probability that molecule 1 is in the volume dr1, molecule 2 is in the volume dr2 about r2. So, this is the position vector, this is the elemental volume and that molecule n thus if I keep on going, so we will come to molecule n, small n now, not it is different small n and capital N is within a volume drn about rn regardless of the location of the remaining number of molecules. So, I am interested n number of molecules small n how they are located regardless the position of the other n plus 1 to capital N number of molecules. So, let us write that expression. So, in this case this expression is straightforward I can write this I can do this up to small n then so now I am writing the Boltzmann factor. So, I have taken the elemental volume of all the atoms where we need to know the distribution from 1 to n. So, if you see it goes from 1 to n, the integral will consist terms from n1 plus to capital N. Okay? So, 1 to n is here, n1 plus plus n is taken care in the integral term. So, this interatomic potential remains the same as we have, it involves all the position coordinates. So, then uh, what I was having is we will be having then n plus 1 onwards capital N now finishes this finishes divided by you know this is all z okay so this is the expression we need to calculate so this z uh, obviously just to make sure what is z z is simply uh, e to minus u to the power of kt but here this is all across all all the atoms okay this is to be mentioned so this when you write z it is across all the atoms 0 to n so i'm just writing here it is from 0 to n all all the atoms but here i have this elemental volume term from 1 to small n i am interested in this location the remaining i am not interested in where their position is, I will just weigh it with this Boltzmann factor. So, all the n plus 1 to n terms are here. This is the way you have to write the expression. Okay, so, we go ahead. 
So now as I told you all the ion atoms are indistinguishable, not, not distinguishable, then any of the n molecules can be in dr1, okay. So uh, can I tell, okay, the first molecule is in only 1 and second is in 2 and third is in 3, no. Any of the n molecules can be in dr1, any of the remaining molecules can be in dr2 and then any of the remaining molecules after subtracting the dr1 and dr2 molecule can be in dr3. So it means if I want to write down in terms of likelihood, so one of the n molecules can be in dr1, then the remaining there will be n-1 only, the remaining any one of the n-1 molecules will be in dr2, so that remaining one of the molecules of n minus of n plus 1, it is actually n minus of n plus 1, so this will be a bracket here, is in the volume drn about rn regardless of the position of the other n minus n molecules. So this n minus n molecules are within the elemental volume. So let us write down the expression. So we will write down what are the number of ways. So there are n ways of putting this molecule within dr1. So remaining there will be n minus 1 ways because one of the molecules is already inserted. We have already fixed. So remaining is n minus 1 way. So it means if I can write in this manner, so first molecule n ways, second molecule n minus 1 ways, third molecule n minus 2 ways because 2 of 1 of 1 is already taken, second one is already taken, so you are remaining n minus 2 ways only. Like that you keep on doing like this until you get n minus n plus 1, okay. Then you keep the exact expression what we wrote earlier, dr1, dr2, like that you go till drn, okay. Then remaining n plus 1 terms you have to keep here, the ex this term and then uh, you have the way which we did earlier dr of n plus 1, dr of n plus 2, so these are all vectors, finally dr of n, so this is the x, right. So then what you do, these are the number of ways, this is the weight factor, it has to be normalized, you divide by z, so we write here zn because zn means n is in subscript, n means it is n number of atoms, so it comes, the configurational integral value is zn. So now, let us write the prefactor term in terms of factorial way. So if I write in terms of factorial way, I can write in this manner n by n minus n factorial, okay. Then remaining terms remains the same, integral also remains the same. So r of n by zn this is the expression. So this what I can do, I can write down, uh, I can define a row as n by v. So I can write like this, rho to the power of n, rho to the power of n. So it means n by v to the power of n because I have already written dr1 here, I will write down this expression other than this. If I leave out this expression, the remaining term I can write in terms of this g to the power of n with then this will be a function of then this one will follow okay. So now I have broken this expression okay. So what I did was I broke this expression n factorial by n minus n factorial in terms of rho n and I have defined a new function that is g to the power of n which is a function of r1 to rn, okay, r1 to rn t and rho number density. Then I have multiplied with the all the respective elemental volume, okay. So this is the way this particular function we are now interested in. So what is that? So now we let us correlate g, so then gn, if I want to write the expression for gn, the distribution function in this case, so this is r1 to rn, now this will be small n, okay, 
t into rho so i can write down this as n factorial by n minus n factorial from the previous expression then i have to write this manner v by n into n because i have written rho n outside i have to write 1 by rho n inside to make it consistent so i have written 1 by rho n inside so 1 by rho n means n so i just have to write the reciprocal of that that is v by n okay so this factorial was earlier there okay and then what i'll do is i will write the entire expression so e to the power of minus u by kt then uh, remaining terms is as it is we are concerned only with the remaining terms which are r of n so all these small n plus one terms are in the prefactor okay then i divide by z so this is the expression for the distribution function now let us suppose we are only interested in how the molecules 1 and 2 are distributed so it means in this case n equal to 2 and if i are interested in three different atoms or three different molecules then n equal to 3 let us write for n2 first then we will write the expression for n3 so if we take the distribution of n2 so g will become 2 then instead of writing all the vectors i will only write two vectors r2 right and temperature and rho it will be a function now this will be only two terms so it will be n into n minus 1 then this will be simply v square by n square now this term will become e to the power of minus u by kt dr what will be this it will be 3 so from 3 onwards you write all the elemental volume till capital n okay because there is n number of atoms out of that we are only interested in the distribution of one and two atoms so you write all the elemental other than the two atoms and divided by the configurational entropy Z. so this sometimes what you can do is that approximately it can be written as a see uh, this n square and this because n is a very large quantity so n into n minus 1 can be approximated as this can be approximated as n square so n square n square cancels out so you have v square only so it means i can write down here simply v square into this and e to the power of minus u by kt then dr3 and dr by Zn. So, this is the configurational entropy. Now, let us write for 3 atoms. 3 means we want to write for 3 of the position vector R1, R2, R3, T into rho. So, now you will have 3 factors here. Again, I can make the use of that, that n into n into n, n into n minus 1 into n minus 2. So, because n is very large number, it can be written as n cube. So, I am not writing that. So finally, what you will get is the similar analogy. You will get v cube. Instead of v square, you will get v cube. But here, this will start from dr4 onwards, dr5, drn by zn. Okay. So, this is the way you can get the distribution function now let us see what is the physical significance of this g2 g3 that we need to understand so for a n body correlation i will multiply this by rho square so it means i can put down these values as rho square i multiply by rho square because we have not written rho to the power of n so now i multiply rho square to it to g2 which is a function of r1 and r2 t rho so because uh, i am multiplying n square by v square now one of the n square will cancel so you will be having only n into n minus 1 remaining 
so it will be simply be n into n minus 1 then uh, that same expression e to the power of minus u by kt 1 start from r 3 and end at n by zn okay or i can again write this n square this can be so it becomes so when you multiply this it becomes simply the expression is simply n square into this expression this is the way and then obviously for rho cube you have to take cube of this so this will again become equal to n cube likewise analogy so you have all the terms u minus kt here it will be have u f 4 by z n because in the original way this will be the likelihood what are the different ways these are different ways that was the distribution this is the different ways this gr has much more significance as compared to this number of ways because this distribution function will help us in computing the thermodynamic properties later on which we will see so now we come to that important term which is called the radial distribution function this g these are called the radial distribution function because you will be doing this computer simulation methods where you frequently use this rdf for observing the local ordering of the atoms so this is very important in the context of both molecular dynamics and monte carlo simulation let us go ahead and then see the effect of this so it means if i want to say what is this it is the likelihood that a molecule is located in a volume element dr1 about the position vector r1 as origin so if r1 is the origin so it means if this is the point r1 so then the sphere of influence is this what is the probability I have another molecule which is at R2? So this is let us say this is R2. It may be here, it may be here, it may be here, whatever. So what is the probability? It is observing another molecule at a distance R2 position vector. So if I want to fix this R1, I need to find out the probability that it is within this elemental volume dr2. So that is how it is written. So it means that expression is nothing but n factorial by n minus 2 factorial just now we saw into dr1 dr2 like this you have to write and then the integrals follow e to the power of minus u by kt then remaining all the numbers by zn. I can do some simplification this is n square because of usually what I did in the previous slide I will make it simple so it is again e minus u by kt dr3 up to drn now this n square I can also write down in this manner n square v square by dr1 dr2 because I need to have a v square here I will put a v square here and divide and multiply by v square I put it like this dr3 drn so this is obviously all any all the time it will be zn so this is nothing but this is rho square this is rho square okay and this entire thing is what this is actual to g2 of r1 r2 t and the remaining terms are this dr1 and dr2 so it means the likelihood that a molecule is located in a volume element dr1 about the position r1 and simultaneously the second molecule is in the volume element dr2 is this so it means you need to have rho square that is the bulk density of the particular uh, system of interest multiply with square of the radial distribution function and the elemental volume that is what it implies 
So it means this is sometimes called as a two particle or pair correlation function G2 R1 R2 rho and T is a function of the position vectors R1 and R2 for the two atoms molecular density or bulk density and temperature. Sometimes this is also written as simply G2 R1 R2. So this particular function is called the radial distribution function. So obviously this value is unity value will be unity when there is no intermolecular interaction. So, when u is 0, so it means when u is 0 there is intermolecular interaction is 0, it does not one of the atom does not feel the effect of the other atom. So, all those Boltzmann factor everything goes away. So, it means it will be simply you have what is the average that is the average density into average density whole square that will be your uh, probability. So, there is no intermolecular interaction. When does it happen? When there is no intermolecular interaction, u is 0, it does not feel the effect of each other or it may will be also be unity when these two atoms are far apart. So, it is so huge distance that atom 1 or molecule or atom or molecule 1 or molecule 2 does not feel the presence of each other. So, u is almost close to 0. When this happens, then obviously this is again unity. So, gr will become unity. So, both ways you will get unity when they are close to each other but no interaction or when they are far apart then also it is no interaction. In that case, both the cases it will be unity. It means what does this unity means? Unity means that the entire distribution of molecule is simply the bulk density that is what it means, there is no interaction, but that is not true. If the molecules are close to each other, they will feel the presence of each other and because of this presence of each other, the Boltzmann factor comes into play. So, obviously, when uh, uh, the u is equal to 0, if you put on those expression, you will see Zn equal to v to the power of n, if I am considered an atomic system and the integral in the numerator becomes equal to Vn minus 2. And if you see this V n minus 2 is becomes V 2. So, if it is a 2 atom system, it will come V 2 minus 2 0. So, it will be all cancels out. So, the likelihood of a molecule being in the volume element dr 1 and simply simultaneously a second molecule being in the volume dr 2 is simply rho square dr 1 dr 2 because here the gr is equal to 1. So, there is no gr term here or I can write down this g 2 is equal to 1. But it is nothing but rho dr1 into rho dr2 or rho into dr1 or you can say dr whole square. So, this is true only when there is no energy of interaction, therefore, no correlation between the molecules in the volume elements dr1 and dr2. So, means molecules are uniformly distributed. The number of molecules in any volume element is just the average density times the size of the volume element. Okay. But there is connection between the two volume elements. Molecules will always interact unless it is inert gases. But we talk about the molecule system of interest, mixtures, solutions where molecules do interact. So, it means if there are two molecules in two volume elements, they has to interact if they are sufficiently close, even if they are sufficiently close on a molecular scale, the presence of a molecule in one of the volume element influences the likelihood of a molecule being in the second volume element. So, at very low density correlation thus is given by the Boltzmann factor or the interaction energy. When there is a high density the correlation then becomes much more complicated to evaluate. Now, let us put some more questions. Now, I ask us in an alternative manner. What is the probable number of molecules in volume and element? Earlier, I was asking what is the probability of a molecule. Now, I am writing what is the probable number of molecules? How many molecules are there in this elemental volume? Given that there is a single molecule in dr one So, this is again that brings us to the same problem. So, if you have a single molecule here, and this is suppose its sphere of influence, how many molecules are within its sphere of influence of molecules? It may be 2, it may be 3, 4, 5, 6, how many? So, how will we get the distribution? That is the question, but you have only one single molecule in the origin. So, it means 
the issue here now becomes complicated why because whenever you are trying to measure how many molecules the molecule itself are moving they are not static they are moving here and there so it means the likelihood of molecules being simultaneously in dr1 and dr2 so you have to get a what is the likelihood of molecules being simultaneously in dr1 and dr2 divided by the likelihood of a molecule being in the volume element dr1 so you get this particular ratio that will tell us the probability so you find out the probability that they are simultaneously in dr1 and dr2 how many molecules are dr1 and dr2 and then divide it with what is the probability that molecule 1 is in dr1 that is the way you can tell how many molecules are there in dr2 so i want to write down again an expression so it will be if i want to write down probable number of molecules probable number of molecules simultaneously okay simultaneously in dr1 and dr2 this is very important word because it is simultaneously in both dr1 and dr2 then divided by probable number of molecules of molecule in dr1 this is the way so now you can write out the expression what is that expression all about so now you can write down so it will be nothing but n factorial by n minus 2 factorial number of ways then we will have to keep this two elemental volume outside then you have the multidimensional integrals with the Boltzmann factor averaging keep out the first two coordinates and just have the remaining 3 to n number of coordinates and zn this is the denominator likewise i can also write the sorry this is the numerator the denominator i can write down similar manner because only only one way of writing it so you have only n factorial by n minus 1 factorial in this case you will have only dr1 here e to the power of minus u by kt dr now here you will write from 2 onwards up to n okay by zn okay so this is for two molecules so that's why i written the number of ways is for only one molecule number of ways this two and one signifies the number of molecules let us do some mathematics again so it will be now n square into dr1 dr2 then uh, this integral so zn and zn will cancel out so what you have is simply you will have another term here as n okay so just do the mathematics here so it will simply be n and then you will have dr1 but starting from the elemental volume 2 ending with number of molecules okay now what i will do is that i will try to write down in terms of radial distribution function so what it is what i will do is n so this n will cancel with this n so we will only have one n and this dr1 and dr2 will be as it is kt then you have the remaining terms now the for the denominator what i will do is that i will fix the origin of the atom one so i will write here just short comment you can also note down fix the origin then you can prove it in this manner e to the power of minus u by kt to the power of if you do this like this by zn 
this will become nothing but equal to 1 upon v. This will become equal to 1 upon v. So, if you do that, you multiply 1 by v with this dr1. So, it will become dr1 by into 1 upon v is dr1 by v. Okay. So, in this case, actually we have this zn here of the followed, but when you have the zn here, so this entire term actually get reduced to 1 upon v because you are to fix the origin of atom 1 and you may have to convert this particular multidimensional integral in terms of relative distance from atom 1 because only constant of atom 1 only in the denominator. So, this becomes dr1 by v. So, if you do the again this correctly, it will become simply nv upon v square into dr2 v square minus u y k t. Okay, by Zn. So, what is this? This entire term, this is nothing but G2, which is a function of R1, R2, rho and t. Okay. So, it means and this is what is this if I do this because I did V square and V square multiply and divide. So, it will be Nv because this V goes up in the numerator. So, you are having only n by v. So, n by v is simply equal to n by v into g2 into dr2. Okay. This is only now dr2 will remain because this dr1 and dr1 cancels out. So, only dr2 remains or this will be simply rho into g2. Sometimes you can write Do dr2. So, this is the way you can compute what is the distribution or what is the probability that and how many molecules because you are multiplying with the bulk density, you will get what is the number of molecules which is expected in elemental volume dr2 when there is a single molecule in dr1. So, this will give the number. So, this is the way this radial distribution function comes into the picture. So, what we have done is we have tried to reduce this entire expression in terms of radial distribution function and the numerator was denominator was easy to do because there was only one atom. So, we could do fix the atom origin as atom 1 and did the differential different integration of this particular expression as 1 by v. So, this then get cancels out and we are left with only the pair distribution function multiply with the density. So, this is the way you can find out the number of molecules expected in DRO2. So, for this I will conclude this lecture. So, please go through this chapter uh, 11. Chapter 11 actually uh, discusses in detail all the radial distribution function. So, in the next class what I will do, I will see what is the physical significance of radial di distribution function, what does it imply, what are the physical insights in the terms of mixtures we will get, what information we can reduce. Okay. Thank you.